Hello. Well, it's been a while since we had a chat, and it seems like I've got plenty to say all of a sudden. Um, behind me, the house that once was somebody's home. I've driven past this place many times, and many times I've said to my to my husband, "We have to stop there. That 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 house has a story, and it's the story of many." many people across this country of ours. Broken Australia, broken dreams, broken homes. Sad, really, when you think about it. But, you know, I've had some emails of late asking me where I've been, why I haven't spoken out on some things that have been in the news of late that are, I guess I normally would speak out on. I'm going to share something with you. I, I am a little unwell and I've been spending some time in and out of the hospital and uh, you know it's an illness that I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat it, uh, I'm going to fight it like all hell, you can be guaranteed of that. But I also equally have been fighting it for a very long time. I don't get into my personal issues, I figure my life's an open book and you just get a, a fair bit of me. But I felt compelled today to let you know uh, that I do appreciate those that pick up perhaps the anomalies that come with me and just let everybody know that I love and appreciate all of the well wishes and the respect that I'm given on a daily basis. So we can get that out of the way now. So if I'm looking or sounding a little worse for wear, now everybody knows why. Um, okay, where do I start? I think I better start with 12-year-old children being mature enough to make decisions that will that most adults would struggle making. So here's the thing. We have at the moment in this country a case before the Family Law Court um, about four children who are being deported back to Italy because of a, a custody issue. Uh, these children aren't babies. Um, they're all educated from what I can see um, and know what they feel. Now, the Family Law Court, in essence, is meant to be about judges sitting on a bench that do nothing more than put the best interest of the child or children first. That's all the Family Law Court really is supposed to be about. You and I both know, invariably and more often than not, the children in question don't get spoken to as if they have an opinion. Can't imagine why. You know, if someone annoys me or if someone offends me, what do I do? I open what is my God-given right, and that is my mouth, to say what I will. You don't have to agree with me. A lot of people don't lately, so it seems. However, the bottom line is this. Twelve-year-old children are just that. But those same twelve-year-old, thirteen-year-old, five-year-old children, I guarantee you, can tell you more than you want to know. And you don't want to know, so you don't listen which is what the government and the judicial system continues to do. And we as Australians, most of us broken, we don't have a say. We don't have a choice. We do have a choice, Australia. I have a choice to fight this illness. You have a choice to fight for the rights of your children. Now, I'm always in trouble for saying this about that or that about this. You know what? I really believe... That maybe it really is my middle name. Someone once said that to me. Trouble's got to be your middle name, KK. Maybe it is. And I'll go to my grave enjoying being a troublemaker. If it protects one child. If it saves one adult from suicide. If it saves one mum of an autistic child from feeling they're alone. Yet, born with a mouth, what can I do except exercise it? We have in Tasmania a judge down there who says... Terry Martin's defence is acceptable. This 12-year-old child was mature enough to say she understood that prostituting herself was in the best interest of her family. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but it doesn't sound real good to me. But then you go to Western Australia, and the Western Australian Mental Health Commission is trying to introduce a bill that says 12-year-olds do not need their parents' consent if they are mature enough to accept they need sterilisation or electroshock therapy or to be institutionalised. Come on, Australia. I'm saying it out loud. Perhaps you should say it out loud. And it'll sound as abhorrent to you as it does to me. Here's the thing, though. I keep screaming. You keep agreeing. Nothing keeps happening. Except a cat.
that's decided in this farm paddock to crawl up my leg. So that's the perils of doing filming wherever you find a place. So this is the thing. We have to know that we're broken. We're broken as a country. We have a government that's broken. We have it okay for politicians to do the wrong thing. And then we pay their legal bills. Now, I don't know about any of you that have ever been in the need for legal aid, perhaps. Do you know how hard it is to get legal aid? I bet you do if you've ever needed it. Yet, a politician who has allegedly spent tens of thousands of dollars of taxpayers' money, we then pick up his legal bill. Yeah, not liking that one either. But, as I said, we are the voting public. We are supposed to be who the government of the day looks out for. Hmm. I talk to people in hospitals all the time. I'm laughing, not about the hospitals, but now the cat's decided to attack my husband and it's a little hard to keep a video camera straight when you've got a cat clawing up your leg. So, um, I talk to people in hospital all the time that don't have the money for their medication or their procedures or their chemotherapies because they're in the public system. I guess that's broken, like this house behind me. I see broken children. I see broken adults. I see broken lives. And I see broken homes. And if I see it, clearly, and I have a brain tumour, what is their excuse? I'm partially at the point where I've got to ask someone else to look for me. But I see every day this government and the bodies that support this government getting it wrong. They say, what would I know? <laughs> I guess in my own way, I know enough to say that you're getting it wrong. This case of these children in Queensland shows us start listening to the children. Of course, as adults, you can work out if a child's been coerced or because there are good mums, bad mums, good dads, bad dads. We know it happens. But by and large, if a child has been abused, if a child is fearful, we need to listen to them. Why is it you will accept that they know not what they talk about? Because under the Hague Convention or whatever you want to roll into it, the bottom line is kids have got to come first. Please stop and think. And as I say, I say it all the time, write to your parliamentarians. Make a noise. But nobody does. Well, I get a little bit sad then because I wonder who else will come up and stick their ugly mug on a screen day after day, week after week and remind Australia we're a great country full of great people. Some incredible ideas come out of this country, but where do they end up? Oh, they have to go overseas because our government never, ever provides what's needed for our scientists, for our doctors, for our writers. Wake up. Wake up, Australia. We're supposed to be in control, and we're not. Our government's supposed to lead for us. Well, we know where they've led us of late. I'm not here to say anything more than please. Please start to utilise the one thing that belongs to you. It's a democratic country we live in. I know that doesn't mean you can always say what you want to say. Give it a best shot. So I guess all I'm asking is put your hand up for the kids. Speak out for their protection and listen to what they've got to say. And for now, that's about me done. So be good to yourselves and each other. And as always, say hi to your kids for me. Ta-da.